Hi everyone and welcome to this quick Godot tutorial on how to create a simple pose menu in Godot 4 and C Sharp. In this short video, we're going to discuss how we can easily pose the entire scene, but still interact with our pose UI, and even how to add a cool effect on the background to better show the game pose state. As usual, don't forget that if you want to get the files of this tutorial directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my Godot tutorials over here. And also, since we'll be coding our logic in C Sharp, make sure that you have a version of Godot with .NET enabled. And now with all that said, let's dive in and discover how to implement a pose menu in Godot and C Sharp. So, in most games, you can catch a break by pausing the game and freezing time. Usually, this pause panel is accessible either via a button in the UI or via an input action, and you can often exit back to the game in a similar way. From a game dev point of view, it means that we need to have some tool to instantly freeze our entire scene, so that every node, every component, every function is stopped temporarily, and we're sure that we don't have any objects falling or reacting to events, for example. So this is what we want to do today in this Godot tutorial. And actually, the cool thing is that in this engine, we have a super cool built-in to do all of this. The scene tree posed boolean. This is a simple true-false plug that you can set or unset to have Godot interrupt or restart all calls to the base process, the physics process, and even the input function of all the nodes in your scene at the same time. Meaning that once you've turned this boolean to true, you'll effectively have posed your entire code game all at once. Now to enable this post state, it's straightforward. We just have to set the getTree.posed variable to true in one of our scripts. So let's say that here, for example, we have this basic demo game scene that we prepared a while ago in this previous tutorial of the series. You see that we also have a very basic UI with a few buttons on the left and a pause button in the top right corner. All of this interface is under a UI node. So let's create a new UI manager script that we put on this interface root node. For now, of course, our c -sharp script will be empty, but we can easily add a first callback function for our pose menu button that sets getTree.posed to true, like this. Then, if we recompile our Godot c -sharp project and assign this function as the callback for our pose button, then as soon as we click on it, we see that everything freezes. We could now complete our callback function so that it also shows the pose panel in our scene tree, this one over here, and also make sure that this panel isn't visible when the game first starts by hiding it in the ready function of our manager. And there we go, we already have quite a big part of our pose menu system taken care of. By the way, if you wanted this pose menu to be accessible via a key or a gamepad button too, you could reuse the concepts of input actions and of button shortcuts that we discussed in those two previous episodes of the series. So basically, by configuring some toggle pose input action in our project with specific per device input keys, and then by setting the shortcuts property of a button to use this input action, we could have our game trigger a press of this button when we use our input. Alright, so that's really cool, we now have a pause menu. Except that right now, we can't actually exit this pause state and resume our game. Our resume button doesn't do anything, so we're kind of soft lock here forever. Something important to understand with the Sentry Pose Boolean is that while it's extremely handy, it's also quite powerful. By default, freezing the whole scene hierarchy like this sort of blocks everything in your game, which is the point of what we want to do, but also means we can't exit the state. 
note that it's not entirely true and there's actually a bit finer detail to this so if you're curious you should have a look at the dedicated page in the Kodo official docs but in our case this is a good enough approximation. That being said, there's of course a solution to this delicate problem, and that's to change the processing mode of some of our nodes, namely the post panel, so that they are still alive and interactable when the scene tree is posed. This option is available in the inspector of any node, because it's on the base node type. So it's accessible in the node section at the very bottom, and you see that it offers five possible values. Inherit, which is the default value, means that the process mode is the one of the parent node, or the grandparent, or the grand grandparent, basically the first node above this one that has a non inherited process mode, or the scene tree object itself if there is no parent. Possible means that this node and all of its children in inherit mode will be processed only when the scene tree is not posed. When post means that this node and all of its children in inherit mode will be processed only when the scene tree is posed. Always means that this node and all of its children in inherit mode will be processed whether the scene tree is posed or not. And finally, disabled means that this node and all of its children in inherit mode will never be processed. So, because by default everything is set to inherit, Posing a game by using the gettree.post boolean will just interrupt the process of every node in the scene. So okay, let's say that here for pose menu sub hierarchy, we change the process mode of a node to when post. This tells Kodo that this node and its whole sub hierarchy should only be processed, interacted with and updated when the scene tree is posed, which is perfect for pose menu. But so anyway now, if we create a new callback function in our UI manager to unpause the game and hide the pause menu, and we assign it to our resume button in the pause panel, optionally with the same shortcut as before using the toggle pause input action, then we see that we've solved our issue. We can now use either our mouse to click on the buttons or our input action to directly jump in and out of the pause mode. To wrap up this quick tutorial, let's see one last cool trick for a pause menu, and that's how to give players a better feedback that they're actually in a pause state. I mean, it's quite obvious that we have a big menu panel in the middle of the screen, but in some games, this doesn't freeze the game behind. And so with our current setup, if you're not sure that the game is actually paused, you'd have to carefully look at the scene behind the panel to check whether it's still moving or not, which is clearly not ideal. Instead, a common technique is to apply some blur to the background, to clearly tell players everything is put on hold and that they can focus solely on this UI panel. It's also a nice way of ensuring that your UI is easy to read and to create a better depth-based layout of the screen rather than having your post panel and the still image of the game blend together. Now, as is always the case when doing some post processing effects in a game engine, this requires that we code what's called a shader to actually blur our background image. So shaders are a really complex topic, and I don't want to dive into this here, because it's not really the focus of this episode. But it's actually already sort of on my to-do list, and of course, if you really want me to talk about shaders and materials, or perhaps more specifically post-processing and screen effects, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to bump up this topic for future episodes. Anyway, today I'm going to stay quite vague and just say that we have this shader resource called blur.gdshader and you can download it directly from my GitHub if you want or here's also the code if you're curious. This is an asset in the project and it can be used when you create a shader material resource in a Godot project inside the shader slot of this new resource. It's basically a custom program that the engine can send to the GPU of your computer to tell it how to render objects that have this shader material on. 
So it's a bit like when you create a standard material 3D resource with a red tint and you assign it to a mesh instant 3D object. It turns red. It's just that here our code is a bit more complex and it's meant to be applied on UI objects instead of 3D objects. Alright, so in our case, let's just do this in practice without worrying too much about the theory. So first we create a new shader material resource, name it blur.trs and assign our blur.gd shader shader resource to it in the inspector. Then inside our panel sub hierarchy, just above the center container, we'll add a new node of texture rect type, have it spread to the full screen rect, call it blur, and at the bottom of its inspector, assign our new blur.trs resource as its material. You see that now it indeed appears full screen and blurred. Note that we can always go and edit our material sub-resource to control how blurred we want the image to be. And that's it! If we run our game again now, you see that as soon as we press our pose input action or click on the button, the background gets blurred and we get our pose menu like before. Of course, you could even improve this system slightly and make it softer on the eye by creating an animation player node in the pose panel hierarchy, creating an animation that turns the opacity of the blur panel from 0 to 1 to have it fade in, and finally, in the C-Sharp script, trigger this animation in the pause function. This way, you'd have this really cool animation when you trigger a pose where the background quickly blurs but doesn't just instantly turn into a blob of pixels. So on this note, here you go. You now know how to set up a simple pose system in Godot, and even how to give a special blur effect to the pose background. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.